and it wasn't just about the scooters. It was about yourself. It's about fashion. It's being different than anybody else who was walking around. When you talk about community, exactly what it is. You talk about things like loyalty, commitment. And all we did all weekend was fight. Get this. Sleeping telephone boxes. There is surreal in them days. That image stuck in my mind. The smell. The two shrub, big cloud of two shrub. Everybody riding off together on mass. Massive impact on me as a kid. I'll never forget that. First became interested in scooters probably around 12 or 13 years old. Um, as I said, we were kind of a group of young Herberts, I suppose. Um, young skinheads, young mods, young punks, a bit of a mixed bag, me and my mates. And then one night, one kind of summer's night, we were all kind of camping out behind mum and dad's house near a lake. Uh, he had loads of racket, went down uh, to have a look at that. And it was just loads of lads on scooters all going to a rally. Uh, a couple of lads that I knew, older lads that I knew, one of them being one of the founder members of the club, a lad called Ray Cowan. Um, he knew one of my older cousins, and I'd always seen Ray knocking about up on the terraces. Um, and I think from that moment on, I was hooked. There was never ever going to be any doubt that I would have a scooter. So this is 1962 GS160 Mark I. This has been my pride and joy for many, many years. Many years. I swapped it for uh, an LI 150 Series 2. Um, so I do, they brought, and, well, brought in scooters, sold furniture, this, that and the other. Um, and it was just white when I got it. And then I had a crash on a P200. Got to work, got, just got wiped out. Salvage, managed to salvage the engine out of it. And the insurance money I got, paid for it to be done like as you see it today really as the Grim said yeah um, up and down the country all over the place really into Europe um, France through to Germany we've done Holland a couple of times um, around Ireland places like that um, and I, I've always gone on this uh, but more recently I bought the, uh, the GTS 300 yeah and that's going to get some ammo now so you can have a semi-retirement and then as growing up as a young lad um, in my teens I used to knock around in a place called the Maple Grill a lot of lads would park up there on scooters. They used to have rucks with kind of bikers and stuff like bikes would turn up. There was a bit of pushing shoving going on. And then I left school, couldn't get a job, ended up on a YTS, and before I knew it, I became a, a young dad. So I missed out on the the kind of 80s, the late 80s stuff. So all the lads who were doing rallies then, I never got to do that. We hit kind of early 90s. Um, rave scene was massive. We were all doing the rave scene. There's something missing in one sense really, you know, I was going to some pubs and clubs and stuff, I see the odd scooter knocking about, mm. kind of always want to go back into that. Um, and then I was working at a place called Delta East Staley Bridge, needed transport, landed at Lambrett and, and kind of that was it really. Um, got maybe done it from there and then I started with a lad called Paul Leatherbarry, who was another, who was the co-founder of the night over there. I happened to bump into Gaz because he started working at my place. When he, when he started on a Monday day, there were lads telling him, well, is it because he obviously came on his land record. Uh, and some of the lads at work said, oh, there's an old guy here called Paul. He, he, he had the night house, he started it. And he knows a lot about scooters and Gaz said, oh, I've heard all that bullshit before. When I turned up on days, I actually met him and he explained about it. I should have brought him photographs in of when we used to go on the rallies. I spoke to Paul about the club. He said, You know, if you want to get it going again, I'll back you, move it back to Staley Bridge, maybe grow it again. He was aware it was gone very quiet. And I couldn't really find the night holes as they were then. And I knew they'd, they'd place themselves at the station pub in Ashton Underline. So, um, yeah, I'd spoke to him, I've been to the station a couple of times, not really anybody turning up um, of any note really, not not really much of a club thing going on I felt. So again, like I, said, I spoke to Paul, he says, yeah, move it into Staley Bridge, so we did that. First night of having the club, uh, there was myself and Mick, a uh, lad called Carl Waterhouse turned up and Dave Powell. They were two old night owls that I was glad to see really. And then from then it kind of grew, you know, it kind of grew. Um, a couple of old heads turned up, a couple of new lads turned up and we kind of bounced along really for a few years. We had some on good, really good rallies together, um, really good turnout that year at the Isle of Wight. 
uh, well supported club, well turned out club. They must have had about 40 odd members by about 99. Um, and then we kind of went through a bit of a bad patch really. About, well, it must have been about 15, 12, 15 years ago. Went through a bit of a bad patch um, where we lost some members because of his own stupidity and stubbornness really. Falling out of all lads from other clubs. Got a bit of a reputation I suppose in one sense that didn't kind of suit us. Didn't want, didn't want those sort of labels. So some of the edit brigade went, some of them stayed, and then we, well, we just get through that, and here we are again. You know, 2020, um, last year, 71 registered members. Um, not all rally going lads. Some lads like just a Sunday ride out. Some lads like it just for the fact that they're, they're part of a club. Other lads are hardcore. They do every rally they can. They do individual ride outs. Um, so yeah, it's going from strength to strength. 60 odd lads registered already this year. I've no doubt will be into 70 again by the end of February. So I suppose the future for the club, and not, not only the club, but scrutiny in general really I feel. Because there was a time when um, me and a few of my mates who were kind of the oldest club members, sorry, youngest club members. Um, and obviously we had a lot of older lads who were around in the 70s. Fortunately, some of them aren't even here anyway was anymore that were doing the rallies then. Well, they're dead and gone now. Um, and probably the oldest members, probably in his 70s. The fact that we've got well, two or three young lads in the club. I'm hoping that'll bring in one or two more, really. If you're, if you're into music and you're into live music and you're into being part of something that is not the norm, let's say, anymore. Because when I was growing up, everybody was a mod or a skinhead or a punk or whatever. You all had kind of a label or um, a clan, if you like, or a tribe that you, 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 you joined in as part of. And you didn't want to be like everybody else. You want to do your own thing, really. Whereas now I don't see that. I don't see the youth of today having real any identity um, or any kind of script. And I'd love to see more young people getting into it. But obviously, you know, with the arrival of a couple of young lads the past few years, I feel that really should reinvigorate us again. One day with kids until someone mixed plaster with it. He has got a bit of a thing about putting filler in. Um, so all that means for scooters, really, because he had one first. And then, yeah, went and picked it up with him, quite liked it. No one always shouted at me saying, don't get scooted, <coughs> it's dangerous. And then I just bought one and didn't tell him, she got a bit angry. But we're here now, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, originally, I wanted to learn to drive. Very well. So I decided I was going to get a motorbike. Then ended up going to college with a lad whose dad had scooters. And just ended up deciding that I wanted the scooter. I'm just going to take the car off. I'm going to take the car off. Not a lot, because I need that screwdriver. Yeah, and then. Do you not remember that time? I always remember when I said I was getting a scooter. And then we watched Quadrophenia together. I know it's like a real cliche thing, but then we were both like, fucking hell, this is sick. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, yeah. I know it's proper cliche saying, like, oh, yeah, Quadrophenia. It's got me into school. Yeah, yeah. It was like. It was a bit of a turning point. I felt like we just something doing it. <laughs> something to do. It's like every every other Tuesday when we meet up, there's always people there that you know. It's like a social side of it. I like, and then I like that anyone can help you. So anyone in the club can help you. So that might be like just I don't know anything. Like we've got plumbers, we've got plasters, electricians, mechanics, anything. You sort of keep it sort of in house. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You sort of you'd ask. Someone at the club first before you were to, um, you know, to go elsewhere for some sort of work done on your house or anything like that. Or um, do your mates like you can always talk to them about stuff. You know, if you ever need anything or you know, everyone helps each other out and stuff like that. So I suppose that's what I quite what I quite like about it. Sort of like being the youngest sort of. So we're what 21, 22? Are you twenty two? I am. Yeah. What do you have? You're fucking old, do you? I am. Um, I don't know, it's a strange thing, because everyone quite likes us, but some people didn't when we first joined, purely because we were new, and mm. we were young, and maybe people thought we were taking the, not taking the piss, yes. but we were like, just, we weren't sort of really into it, we were just kind of, a little bit wary, but playing at it, because they've never really encountered anyone like us trying to start it, you know, from our age, even in the 40 years of the club being running, I suppose, obviously they will have done when they were all younger, 
But yeah. recently, in recent times, I can't imagine we've had many uh, many younger members sort of join. Just hold that there so you don't have to move yeah. it. But it's like we've got about fucking 30 dads. It is really. Yeah, Everyone sad. always cares about you. Everyone's yeah. asked about you. I suppose. This is quite nice. When we were going through town on St George's Day when I didn't have a scooter and yours were off the road and I was on the back of Steve's. That was the but best day. A fast scooter that we were going past Granada <laughs> and I'm just holding on for dear life like Fucking hell! He just passing all these cars, rapid as fuck. Must have been doing about fifty mile an hour, sixty mile an hour or something, but on a scooter with like wheels that with no backrest. With no backrest. I'm just like ah. I keep saying it, but eventually, when everybody's gone or too old to ride the scooters, it's like it's just going to be me, you, Lee. But we, we don't know though. We keep saying that, but there might be other there people. There might be a massive influx like next year. You yeah, never. There know. might be a film. I doubt out, it because or... what, what I think is going to happen is all these scooters are going to drop in price, which is going to get people into it because the scooters now you're looking at like for a Lambretta, you're looking at five grand for a good. Do you know something? Because mm. people with not much knowledge want to get on a scooter and ride it whereas we're not too fussed we pay pretty low prices for our scooter I mean you didn't sorry I'm speaking for myself here mm. yeah. but I paid a low price for my scooter because I know how to fix it whereas people want top end scooters because they don't know what they just want to get on it and ride it and they want the sort of really? warranty and insurance with it even though it's an old scooter from like the 60s or whatever they still want some sort of insurance where it's been fully rebuilt fully repainted it's not going to rust anytime soon it's all been welded and everything do you know what I mean? They want to know it's going to be sort of reliable enough to sort of go down the street and look cool. And I mean, like I say, when all these scooters come up for sale, when people are getting too old to ride them, etc., you know, give, sort of giving them up. And, you know, I think that's when it could start again, but it's whether people are going to come into clubs. Mm. Because there's a lot of people you see riding on the road that aren't actually in clubs because they don't like maybe clubs that they've been in previously. And they don't like the club mentality of like, you're in, you're in, you know, you know. You're either in or you're out. Yeah, it? you're either in or you're out. And I mean, our club isn't like that at all. You know, it's it's quite accepting. Mm. So the club's going to be different from like 1978 as it to it, what it is now. And I mean, like you know, you'll speak to you speak to Nat Gaz Mac, and he'll tell you that it's a different club. It sort of died off in the late 90s because everyone was raving and stuff like that, and it sort of changed at that point. Well, it, they did that. No, it changed though. I don't think it ever I mean. died off. No, he said that at one point they had like three members, and then it. In the early noughties, it changed again into a different club, and I think it's going to start changing again. For me personally, that's what I believe. So now, the way it runs at this moment in time is we we have elected committee members. So I, I'm still registered number one, um, and I think that just comes with years in really. To add your years of, of running it, you just earn it, I suppose. Um, but having the committee takes away a lot of my really from me, a lot of pressure. So decision making now is done as a vote. It's done either through the committee, which is elected members, or through the entire club. Just signed up to be on the committee. Well, no, they went to a vote, didn't it? I think the committee's a fairly new thing anyway, because they didn't really have it before. So, but it's good. It's good for sorting out socials and what to do with the club funds, where to go, what to do. So I thought it'd be good to put my name forward. Because last time they did the vote, I was kind of time with the idea of putting my name forward anyway, to go on the committee. But I'd only been in the club a year. And I didn't want to kind of seem like I was being a bit imposing, do you know what I mean? But now I've kind of got a bit more of a feel for what goes on and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's good. Went to a vote. I absolutely smashed it. But the future, it the, going, just keep, yeah, the future of the club, it's, it's right now. It's in our hands. We'll always ride scooters. We'll always ride something with two wheels anyway. In fact, I can just go on two wheels, ride with mates. That's it, that'll do me. It is like a, like a poor family at times. Tonight when I walked in there, Ian hadn't seen him for about four years. I've walked in, it's like I've never left his side. And that's how it should be. Because they are friends you like. If it's having a laugh and doing so much fun, isn't it? Yeah. So it's all about. It's like actually an extension of yourself. It's like, yeah, it's it's kind of like part of us there. In the army, you have lots of comradeship there and brotherhood. That's what I found again. And it's one of the best things that's to me in years. I mean, there's lads in this club. They're like Duffy, for instance. Oh, they is. I mean, oh my God. They've been around forever. Um, in and out over the years. And I think that's a nature of the night old you They're not that stringent. You kind of come and go, don't you? You know, like the life experiences. You know, but you always be one. When you come back, it's where you've never been anywhere else. 
I was always going to be that, but that was it.